Hello everyone, welcome back to the third and final match. Uh, we are on the draw here. We'll keep this hand, it has interaction. A lot of interaction, actually. And it looks like we're playing against Soul Sisters, so this hand's going to be very good against that. Alright, we drew another land, which actually isn't the worst, because we will need it eventually for the Foul Tongue Invocation. I'm not terribly too worried about the Souls Attendant. I think I'll just let our opponent... Um, get in for a couple of damage here. We want our opponent to overextend a little bit. Alright, Squadron Hawk is fine. We're just trying to get our opponent to overextend a little bit into a board wipe. They can take three Squadron Hawks. Alright, we'll take that damage, that's fine. Alright, we drew another land. At this point, I think we're good with lands for a little while. Prefer to draw something else. A dragon would be great, because it'll turn on both the Solengar Scorn as well as the uh, Foul Tongue Invocation. Alright, our opponent has an Emiria, which is not great. But we will have to... We don't really have a good answer for Emiria Game 1, especially. Alright, so we will... Um, definitely be getting some value out of the um, the uh, uh, damnation in a couple of turns here. Just go ahead and get a blue black land here. We have another fatal push that's good. Some more interaction. See if our opponent plays a couple of Squadron Hawks here. They're going to try to get to that 30 life total. That's kind of the key. Opponent has a Ghost Quarter. Which is fine. That's actually good for us. That means it's not a Plains. So we're happy with anything that's not a Plains. And I doubt our opponent will play anything else into our um, removal here. Nope, okay, they'll play a Squadron Hawk, that's fine. And once again, because we see our opponent has Ghost Quarters, we're going to try to get all of our non-basics out of our deck first. Alright, um, yeah, we'll get another Hallowed Fountain. Or Watery Grave, rather. Alright, and we'll just go ahead and Damnation now. Alright, so our opponent has two Squadron Hawks or, and some Unknowns in hand. Alright, Spectral Procession is pretty good for our opponent here. And a Dragonlord Sulmgar is a pretty good draw for us. Alright, so we'll just play this island and we will pass the turn here um, with the ability to push a couple of things and counter something. Uh, we'll let that resolve, that's fine. I think at this point we'll make our opponent sacrifice something. This will preserve our life total a little bit. Okay. So instead of taking three there, we actually gained two. So that seems pretty good for us. And I guess at this point here, we'll just go ahead and jam our first Dragon Lord, and we'll take the um, uh, a Johnny Pride Mage. If our opponent has a path to exile, that's fine.
Yep, okay, they have a path to exile, that's fine. Building up our lands over here. Alright, we'll take four here, going to nine, which isn't great, but I think we're still okay. Alright, Cryptic Command's a very good draw. We'll go ahead and play out our Haven, and we'll pass the turn here. Alright, and we will go ahead right now and Fatal Push our opponent's uh, Ajani here. Ajani's Pride Mage, rather. Get that at least off the table, so we don't have to worry about it a little bit later. Going to 7 is okay. Our opponent's deck doesn't really have any reach, they just have a lot of recurring. Alright, Spectral Procession is something that we will definitely Cryptic Command. So we will uh, counter that and draw a card. All right, and we drew a Dragon Lord, which is a perfect draw. All right, so we will go ahead and um, get the Dragon Lord down. I want to leave up the um, Haven of the Spirit Dragon because if our opponent plays a Wrath, we'll just get it back at the end of turn. Or I guess we could Silumgar Scorn it. Yeah, I guess it doesn't really... We can do one of those two things. Okay, our opponent's going to get down their last, what, two Squadron Hawks? Oh, no, their last Squadron Hawk. It's the only one they have. Okay, so they have three cards in hand still. There's a chance they're all Paths. All right, so how do we want to go about doing this? I think we're going to go ahead and fire up this Creeping Tar Pit. It's part of it because it's not really doing anything else. So we'll go ahead and do that, and we'll get in with both of them. All right, um, we'll go ahead and float some blue mana here. That's actually really good that we got our opponent to use the um, their Ghost Quarter because now they can't Ghost Quarter their Flagstones, which means they're still pretty far off from having um, enough lands to uh, use the, uh, what am I calling it, to use the, uh, the Emiria. Alright, so our opponent's targeting this, so what we're going to do is make our Dragon Lord Hexproof by untapping it here. which will fizzle the Path to Exile. See if our opponent wants to block it. Yep, looks like they do. Okay. Sounds good to us. Our opponent wasted a uh, removal spell and lost a token on that exchange. So that's good for us. Opponent found another land. That's kind of what we're racing here, is we're trying to race our opponent to uh, those lands. Crested Sunmare. Well, it's five mana spell, and we can't really counter five mana spells in this deck, so we're going to have to go ahead and uh, counter, or kill it. So, yeah, we, we have a lot of trouble with this deck count or killing five mana things. We would need to Wrath, and we don't want to Wrath while we have uh, Dragon Lord out, so we will... Just go ahead and um, sell them Garscorn this. That was phrased a little bit poorly, but I hope you uh, caught what I meant with that. All right. So now we would like to draw some action here off the top would be ideal. Alright, we drew another land, which isn't ideal. 
Go ahead and play the top hallowed fountain. Attack with the Dragon Lord again. The best draw would be Silumgar the Drifting Death. That card's just bonkers in this matchup. All right, cool. And we'll take this opportunity here to untap it because our opponent's tapped out. So that way we can't get surprised by anything. Because if we were to do it like in the middle of their combat and they happen to have a path, it could be really bad for us. All right, Honor of the Pure's fine. All right, and another Squadron Hawk. Okay, I did thought I, we were off by one, one Squadron Hawk count. We have this um, Fatal Push, so hopefully our opponent will double block, and then we'll just push one of the Squadron Hawks out of the way, and it'll go our way. Start off with a Serum Visions. Okay, we drew a Jace the Mind Sculptor, which is excellent. So we will go ahead first and attack with the Dragon Lord. Okay, perfect. So we are now able to get um, the dragons off the table. Or sorry, the um, the hawks off the table. And then we can go about um, actually just start fate sealing our opponent here. Just make sure they can't draw anything that's impactful. Spectral possession something that they can't draw. So we'll put that on the bottom of their library. And we'll just go ahead and play that land. And um, untap the Dragon Lord now. There we go. See what they draw for the turn. Alright, and they've just given up. Excellent. Alright, so we're on to game two here. Uh, cards that are good in this matchup. Damnation is very good. So I'd like to bring that in. Uh, the Nile Spell Bombs are actually very good. Our opponent's going to be trying to recur some stuff, and uh, they're never dead, at least in this matchup, so that's good. We'll bring them in. Uh, the Disenchant's probably fine. I think our opponent will have Oblivion Rings, as well as um, the Honor of the Pures and stuff like that. It's at least not a bad card in the matchup. Uh, Dragon Lord's Prerogative might actually be pretty good, because the game will go long, and just big creatures that our opponent's going to have trouble dealing with is also probably pretty good. Um cards that aren't so excellent in this matchup actually not too many so we got six cards we'd like to bring in but i don't know how many of them we actually are going to get to bring in collective brutality is not great our opponent doesn't really have any instants or sorceries and it can't even kill all of the stuff that we want it to kill same with the nameless inversion to be honest our opponent just has a lot of cards that the one for one removal isn't great against uh, Foul Tongue Invocation, same deal, and even Hero's Downfall. So I guess if we cut some of our spot removal and just bring in big things, because our opponent can't really attack through any of our dragons. So we'll just do that, and we've got the four Damnations now in the deck. That should be pretty good. So we'll cut a couple of spot removal that can't necessarily get rid of everything, and brought in a bunch of cards that can. We still have the Fatal Pushes, uh, so we're fine. This hand's uh, a little light, land light, but we'll keep it. All right, Soul Warden. I think we'll just go ahead and start right off the bat and Fatal Push that. Because we can also Fatal Push something on turn three. Next turn, we'll probably get a Hollowed Fountain with the Flooded Strand and then play the Watery Grave and Snap Push something. All right, our opponent doesn't even have a two-mana play, which is excellent for us. We drew a land, which is even better for us. I guess we could have gotten down the Nihil Spellbomb, but I don't want to expose it to um, something very early. All right. The, them getting the Spirits down is not great for us. Um, probably should have fetched at the end of the turn there also, huh? All right. We'll just get Basic Island here. And play the Drowned Catacomb and pass the turn. All right, our opponent's going to get down some Squadron Hawks now. All 
All right. So now I guess here we need to decide whether or not we want to just get the Snapcaster on board, and I'm not very excited about that, so I don't think we do. Uh, search first Cont is a pretty good draw. So we can um, go ahead and play the Search and play a Tap Land here and get the uh, Nile Spell Bomb out. So that's pretty cool. Do that and get the Nile Spell Bomb out. So we are going to be taking a boatload of damage here, at least four. So our opponent has Westvale Abbey here, which is kind of interesting. Um, they're... Our deck doesn't really have a great answer to that. Like, at all. Was it five mana to do it? Yeah, our deck really doesn't have a good answer to it. Alright, see what happens here. We need Damnation. Uh, yes, we'll put Creeping Tar Pit in the graveyard. Alright. That's uh, not great in, in the face of a Field of Ruin. All right, we'll just get our planes here to uh, save our life a little bit, and we'll get the Dragon Lord down. But yeah, not having the Damnation has uh, been real bad here. We have two more looks at a Damnation. But we need to get the uh, creatures off the table here before a, the Westvale Abbey can flip. Okay, our opponent's just destroying all the creatures. That's interesting. Seems to me like they should have attacked first. I don't know how I feel about that. Uh, yeah, we'll put that in the graveyard. Um, and we will play the Flooded Strand, which will allow us to draw um, with our Dragonlord's prerogative. Uh, that's fine, yep. All right, we'll go ahead and just get an island and draw with our Dragonlord's prerogative. All right, cool. So we drew a Damnation, and we get to flip our Search for Ascanta, which are both really good things here. Uh, we want high-impact spells. Uh, Cryptic Command is a high-impact spell. Alright, so we will uh, start off, I guess, with the Serum Visions. And we'll just top a couple of Damnations here. And I guess even fire off the first Damnation, because we have so many. So yeah, I'm cool with that. It's just a one-for-one one here, but if we're going to be drawing other Damnations for the next two cards, I'm pretty happy with just trading off one-for-one um, one with Damnation. All right, our opponent's going to get rid of our Escanta. Huh. Yeah, I guess maybe I misplayed that a little bit. Yeah, I don't think that was the smartest on my part. Well, I guess we still have Snapcaster and the... Yeah. I don't know. Unclear. All right, I think we're, we'll just cash in the, uh, the Spell Bomb here. It might be a little bit pre... Or, um, Premature. But I think... Okay. It's actually a pretty solid draw. Alright, and Jace is a great draw. Alright, so... If we start off with... Um, Snapcaster... We can Snapcaster, um, Fatal Push. Which will let us uh, Fatal Push the Squadron Hawk. Which will make our opponent play more Squadron Hawks, which is kind of what we want. And then we can get our Dragon Lord down.
we'll just always yield to the Soul Warden, that's fine. And we'll play a land. The uh, main reason why I wanted to get down the uh, Snapcaster this turn also is because when we attack with both, I want to play around Blessed Alliance. If that's a card our opponent's playing, I want to be able to attack with both. Okay, Archangel of Thun. That's very interesting. Gets big real fast, too. Alright, fortunately we have a pretty cool play that we can make here. Uh, we'll go ahead and get a land here. Um, ooh, taking it with the Dragonlord Solemngar seems even better. I was going to say we can play Jace and then... Um, we can play Jace and uh, bounce the uh, Soul Warden and then make our opponent sacrifice the Archangel, but now we can play Solemngar with uh, Counterspell Backup. So we'll go ahead and we'll take the Archangel... And get in four, five at our opponent. Maybe try to take some more insurance to just make sure we don't lose to something random. Um, I guess we'll take the Haven of the Spirit Dragon. That way we can uh, rebuy some dragons. None of those cards were particularly good. We played the Minimo this turn as our land. Opponent's got a flagstones, which is fine. Um, I think we might as well just counter that. We'll make our opponent show us a second counter or a second removal spell. Uh, we'll counter this draw card. If our opponent has a Wrath of God, that's actually fine. It's going to be a uh, like basically a two for two here, and we can rebuy our dragons. Nope, okay, so our opponent's just going on the, um, on Spirits and Squadron Hawks, okay. Alright, so they have four toughness, this has four toughness. This thing has lifelink, whenever you gain life, put a 1-1 one, one counter on each creature I control, and that is five, okay. So we can go ahead right into combat, and we can attack with all of these here. If our opponent pile blocks the Ojitai, we can just Fatal Push one of them. And the Archangel will actually make them all bigger, which is kind of cool. Alright, our opponent's just going to Chump, which is fine. We'll play the Haven here, um, and we'll get Jace going. All right, we drew Damnation, which is something that we didn't really want to draw, so we'll put that back, and I guess we'll put the land back, because the other cards might all have utility. We can uh, Snapcaster tap their team. Uh, we can Fatal Push something. We can double Foul Tongue Invocation and push something. All those seem pretty good. The Snapcaster isn't able to trade now. All right, excellent. And we were able to win. All right, so... All right, guys, so some final thoughts on this deck. Um, I think it's very fun. I'm not exactly sure how competitive it is. It's missing a few things. First, it's got way too much going on at the top end here. We've got 7, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. So we have 17 cards that just automatically cost more than 3 mana. Plus, you have to think of the two Snapcasters almost in the same way. So that means we have 19 of our um, 28 spells are 3 CMC or more, which is a crazy amount. 
So it's pretty easy for decks to get under us because of that. Uh, Dragon Lord Ojitai is a great card, but four of them almost seems a little bit clunky. I think Dragon Lord Ojitai is better one or, or two of. The Solemgar Scorns were excellent. This card here it almost made up for the fact that we had to play a bunch of bad cards in our deck and a really high curve. Uh, Jason Mind Sculptor was really good against the Mono White deck there. Uh, just the one of seems probably correct in this kind of build um, because we were able to find it when we needed to. And uh, it was really impactful when we were able to uh, use it. Hero's Downfall was interesting. We were able to kill that one Jace with it. Other than that, it just served as an expensive uh, kill spell. Uh, it's going to be interesting moving forward uh, to see what kind of impact a card like Hero's Downfall will have on the meta. It's super cheap right now on Magic Online. I think it was five cents. So it's probably worth buying into, especially if you plan on putting it in your deck. Uh, out of the sideboard, I was very happy with some of the cards in the sideboard. It seemed like Nile Spellbomb was an improvement over Rest in Peace, which I was playing before. Rest in Peace, although um, really effective against opponents, was also kind of shutting down our own Escanta and making some of our other stuff real awkward, like this Haven of the Spirit Dragon and some other stuff. So I was happy with the Nile Spell Bombs. The Solemgar out of the board was excellent when we brought it in, so was the Damnation. I think I'd like to have one more Thought Seize effect, and I would definitely like to have some sort of land destruction out of the sideboard. So maybe... Um, I don't think our mana base, because of how blue-heavy we are, is able to uh, support Field of Ruin, but maybe playing some Fulminator Mages or some, like, Rain... Or what's the... Field of... No, Rain of Filth? No, that's not the card. It's uh, Rain of Tears. Yeah, Rain of Tears, which is a one black, black, destroy target land sorcery. Uh, maybe, like, two or three of them for the Tron matchup. Hopefully we can, like, cast one, then snap it back, and um, then win with a dragon. Uh, the Prerogative was great when we were able to draw it. Um... Dispel the gate, you know, it's just fine. The Stonies, we didn't really get to see the power of. Neither, same with the Timely. The Disenchant, the Celestial Purge were fine. The Liliana's Defeat was also uh, pretty good. All right, guys, so this is the first time I have done this format where I'm going to be uploading three different videos. Please give me your feedback on it. Make sure you like the video, subscribe so you can see more content, and hopefully I can uh, try to get some of these monetized. Uh, let me know in the comments what kind of deck you want to see next. Uh, I'm still working on some miracles. Uh, I want to try to do something that's different than all the builds that are out there because you can find content on people who are just jamming like four Jaces and a bunch of miracle cards together. I want to do something fun and interesting and uh, hopefully good because a lot of the decks that are out there are not very good. And I'll see you back with that next time. Also, I have a cool Tesserator deck. That actually might be next. Someone sent me a Tesserator deck and I would like to play that next. So um, stay tuned. Thanks for watching, everyone.